Hello there everybody and welcome back to Magna Carta 2. Last video we got started by learning a little bit of the story and going over a couple of the controls that you need to learn in this game. And this time we're going to head over to our current objective. If we recall, Melissa had asked us to go over to the observatory, which is located over here to look out for northern forces. We want to keep the island safe from the civil war that's been going on. No sign of the northern forces anywhere. It's all very quiet. Same as always. So, you're slacking off again? I, uh, I was looking at La Strada, that's all. Do you know what La Strada is? Um, so, it was also built by the hero Strauss, right? Hmm, and what else? Just because someone loses his memory, it doesn't make him an idiot. Strauss is the hero who saved the world, right? Even I know that. Goodness, I'm so happy that you managed to learn that much. Uh, <sighs> in that case, do you also remember how Lestrada floats in the air? I think I taught you that before, too. Uh, well... Why do I even bother trying? Lestrada is the aerial battleship used by the hero Strauss in the Great War that engulfed the entire world 1,000 years ago. After the war, Lonsheim was in ruins, and its people were hard-pressed just to survive. And so, to prevent the fall of Lonsheim, Strauss borrowed Lestrada's capabilities. To save the world, he released his immense power through Lestrada as it flew, sending it into the earth below, sacrificing himself in the process. Thanks to him, the land overflowed with bounty, becoming far more fertile than before, so much so that the earth doesn't even need to be tilled. Wizardry became more potent, and there was a sharp rise in the number of people able to use it. Anyway, there's a lot more to the story. But it's entirely thanks to Lestrada that the people of Lonsheim are able to live here as well as they do. I guess that's why the villagers sometimes offer up prayers to it. That's right. We'll have a review of all this next week, so make sure you have everything memorized. What? Oh man, I didn't even catch all of it! If you have any trouble, ask the villagers. This stuff is common knowledge. <sighs> Hmm, maybe I should give you your next errand. Another one? Well, of course. Uh... Come to the lift at the south of the village. I'll be waiting. <sighs> Well, Melissa, thank you for the history lesson. Even though this game has a lot of dialogue, it's really nice because the majority of them are voiced. And one thing to keep in mind when you're reading the dialogue is to look out for anything that is in parentheses. The game emphasizes on anything that's important, such as La Strada or Strauss. Uh, both of those things were in parentheses, meaning that they're important. It's kind of nice that a, it's all voiced, and B, that you can kind of read it at your own pace while they're talking and look out for keywords that you may or may not need to pay attention to as the game goes on. I also went ahead and grabbed that treasure chest up on top of this dock area, and the only thing we really have to do now is just go back and speak to Melissa. You can talk to some of the other villagers if you want some additional dialogue pertaining to what she was talking to you about earlier, but we're going to learn about all that stuff as time goes on, so it's not terribly worth it. If you go up to a character and they have a red exclamation point above their head, it means that they have a quest for you. 
So these characters are always very important to talk to. And Melissa is going to give us our first task. She's going to send us over to the beach in order to defeat a couple of enemies. We're going to have to defeat a couple of cloppers. So she's going to give us the objective here. And if you feel like skipping through all the dialogue because you're bored or you're in a hurry, it's also very nice because after the characters are done talking, it's going to give you a nice quest details screen. Kill three cloppers that are on Highwind Island shore, and it will also show you your rewards at the bottom. 350 experience and 100 SID. All right, so that should be easy. We're going to get into combat now. And I'm going to skip her tutorial, mostly for the fact that it takes forever to explain the very, very simple parts of the combat system as they are now. Of course, it's going to get a little bit uh, complicated as time goes on. But that's all right, we'll deal with that as they come. Melissa's just letting us know that she's going to go over to the Northern Cavern while we take care of these enemies and we're to report to one of the villagers on the shore. So if you take the southern lift down, you'll come to the lower part of the map, just below the village, and from here you can access the island shore as well as Azure Bell Forest. We're not going to wander into the forest right now because the enemies are a little bit beyond our capability. However, we will be going there later. So for now, we'll just stay on track and go towards the shore, heading towards our exclamation point. Um, Juto? What's up? Could you do me a favor? Yeah? Could you open this lapper's shell for me? You see, I need a pearl. Ah, it's no trouble at all. Hey, are you going to make something with the pearl? Yes. Papa is off at war. I'm making a lucky charm so that he'll come home soon. A kick from you will be plenty to break the lapper shell. Just get close to the lapper shell, and then press the A button. Got it. Leave it to me. Now, I kind of explained this in the first video, but you can press A to interact with all sorts of things on the map, including items. So we're going to kick the shell open. Thank you so much, Juto. I hope your dad comes home safe and sound. To repay you, here's something useful. The column you see over there is the pillar. The pillar is really smart, and it can save the memory of whoever activates it. You lost your memories, right? You should save them at the pillar so that you don't lose them again, okay? To use the pillar, press the A button when you're in front of it. Oh, and the pillar can also restore health, so put it to good use. Wow, talk about handy. I'll give it a try, thanks. All right, you have your pearl now, so head back to the village. It's not safe here. Okay, bye! Again, a very, very self-explanatory type tutorial. You have your typical save point that also restores your HP, so that's nice. And I find that the save points are pretty good. They're really, really close by, so I recommend making a save at each pillar that you come across. Because a lot of the quests in this game are missable. Uh, once you've passed a certain area or you've done a certain objective, a lot of the quests will fade away and you'll miss the opportunity to do them. And as I had mentioned before, all the quests are required for 100% completion of this game. Alright, so now that we're on the shore, we should be able to get into a battle here. 
So right now we're in movement mode, but if you press uh, left trigger, you'll Let's be able go. to go into combat mode. And this is the mode you use when you want to attack and get into battles. Uh, if you get close enough to an enemy, you'll target it, like so. You can press the left stick and Judo will run towards the enemy, which will bridge the gap between you. You press A to attack. Very self-explanatory stuff. And as you attack, you generate what is called Khan. And as you can see, Khan is over on the bottom left-hand side of the screen there. And Khan is like action points or mana or, you know, whatever it is you want to call it. And as you generate Khan, you'll be able to pull off your special attacks using X. You can see that my special attack is called Skyward Hammer. And in order to use it, I only need one Khan. Which is nice because Khan uh, can fade away as you stop battling or as your combo fades. And so some of the higher level attacks using a lot of Khan can be difficult to pull off. The very last thing that's important to remember is the bar that's on the middle of the screen. And this is really the cornerstone of this game's battle system. And what this bar is, is a bar that fills up as you perform actions. And if it gets too full, you'll go into uh, what is called overdrive mode. And overdrive mode is somewhat of a more powerful mode that allows you to do more damage while you're in it. So if you can chain combos together, you can do more damage than what you would normally do. The only problem with that, of course, is once you stop attacking, you will uh, go into overheat mode and you'll be temporarily frozen. You won't be able to perform any actions at all until the bar goes down and then you can go back to square one and start attacking so it's a good idea to always watch the bar and you have to have really really good timing in this game or else you'll be finding yourself in danger because you're also vulnerable when you're in overheat the only other thing i can think of that i didn't quite mention is that you can press left and right button to switch in between targets and doing all of that, we definitely killed more than three of the uh, enemies that we needed. And enemies also show up on the map. You can see there that they show up as a red dot. So you always know how many enemies are around and where. So now that we've finished that, we can talk to Bilter and we can finish up our objective. So we finished killing the Cloppers. And he's going to want us to destroy the other enemies as well. The ones that Melissa specifically told us uh, not to kill. Juto, are you slacking off again? Nope, not at all. Today, I did every last thing that Melissa told me to do. Melissa, huh? She's a fine-looking gal. She's spunky and has her act together, too. If I was ten years younger, I'd snatch her up myself. You'd regret it later. Trust me on this. <laughs> Good one, Juto. Come to think of it, how's the memory? Anything shaken loose? Nothing at all. But you've been looking a whole lot healthier lately. The name Juto fits you perfectly. But isn't Juto the name of a kind of weed? It's a grass that's chock full of vitality. <laughs> Melissa sure has a knack for naming things. It's her way of saying, get your memory back soon and become as tough as a weed. Tough as a weed seems kind of lame if you ask me. I bet my real name is a lot more normal. But you can't remember what it is. <sighs> Show her some gratitude for giving you a name and teaching you how to use a wooden sword. Now that you mention it, how come you can't use a real sword, Juto? Were you in a war before you lost your memory? Or did somebody take a swing at you with one or something? 
Boy, when I look at this fella, the only thing I can see him doing on a battlefield is running away! What? You guys get your kicks making fun of me? <laughs> Come on, you know that I'm just kidding, right? You've gotten better. Enough to use a wooden sword, anyway. Besides, if a war happens to break out, the southern forces will come in and help us. I hope you're right. I knew it. I can't do it. I can't pick up a real sword no matter how hard I try. Why? You know, you might not remember it, but I bet you fought in a war. I bet it must have been terrifying to see so many people dying. Maybe that's why you're scared of real swords, things that hurt people. Really? If real swords are no good, then let's start with a wooden sword. I I'm sorry. I'm just not good for anything. Don't worry about it. You'll be able to use one properly someday. After all, weapons aren't meant to hurt others. They're meant to protect yourself. Did I fight in a war? For some reason, I still can't bring myself to touch a real sword. Thanks to Melissa, I can use a wooden sword. But for some reason, I still can't pick up a real one to use as a weapon. I don't think it has anything to do with my past. But I want to know why I can't pick up a real sword. I just want to know what in the world happened to me. What are you spacing out for? Are you really sulking? I'm not a kid, you know. I was thinking about something. I'm going back. Keep up the good work, old-timers. Oh, hey, have you heard? They say the princess is coming to the village today. What? Really? They say she's the leader of that counter-sentinel unit that was put together to fight those terrible sentinels. Plus, rumor has it that she's also a beauty, so everybody's in high spirits. Impressive. I'm gonna see for myself. Alright, so although Builder has asked us to kill some of the other enemies with the shells, the lappers, uh, we're not gonna do that because it's not for a quest and I can always show off overdrive mode a little bit later. I'm sure that over the course of the game I am going to overheat quite a bit. It's a little bit of a finicky battle system to get used to, but it's very unique. Right now I'm going to go over to the pillar and make a quick save, and our only objective right now is to go back to town and see about meeting this princess. This should be interesting, they probably don't get a princess visiting every other day, so we'll do that next time guys. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope that I will see you next time. <laughs>